Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I would like to show you this horn, which is number 1155. This is a custom design for a customer that was wanting to horn load his RAL Pure Ribbon model number 7020XR. And you may have noticed in the intro time lapse video that I used a plastic adapter. And so the plastic adapter is used to create a very smooth horn throat transition. And so what I'd like to do in this video is do a side-by-side -side comparison against this horn versus a regular flat baffle. And you can see in the picture there, this is what I compared it against. I flush mounted the rowel in a regular baffle. And so I'm gonna do a full set of me measurements comparing both so that you can see the advantages that the bi-radio horn offers. So this horn is a 1.2 kilohertz low frequency cutoff. It features the ES curvature and it's very similar to the other horns that I produce. However, it's custom designed for a true ribbon tweeter. And so you can see there, the true ribbon is, is a very thin membrane, very thin aluminum foil that acts as the, the diaphragm. So let's get started and we can look at some measurements. So let's start with the frequency response measurement. So there in the green, you can see that that is the response of the horn. And then the red is shown with, uh, is without the horn in my test baffle. And so you, you can see there that the horn is providing about 6 dB increase in sensitivity at 1.2 kilohertz. And then um, it's, if we, if we look at just the frequency responses separate, not imposed over each other, you'll see that um, looking at the test baffle, the response is a rising response where it peaks out at around six kilohertz. However, with the horn, you show the frequency response of just the horn, you can see there that it sums to a flat response. And so it's definitely helping bring up that uh, part of the frequency spectrum at around 1.2 kilohertz. So definitely helping there. Uh, the biggest change that we're gonna see from the horn is the off axis measurements. And so you can see, let's look at a side by side comparison. So looking at the horn, what it's doing is it's providing great pattern control starting at around one kilohertz. And so it will gradually narrow and then by 13 kilohertz, we still have a very wide coverage window of 100 degrees. Looking specifically at the test baffle, we can see that the coverage actually, the off axis at two kilohertz, we're actually having increased output as you moved off axis, which is really unusual. So this is bad in two ways. Number one, you're gonna get a lot of energy in that region for your early sidewall reflections. And additionally, consider this, your hearing is actually much more sensitive to sounds arriving at side angles. So our ears are 3 dB more sensitive when, when we're hearing sounds from the side. And you can, if you're, if you're straining to hear somebody, try turning your, your head to the side and you can actually hear uh, quite a bit better from sounds arriving right from the side of your head. So this affects how we perceive the sound in our listening room. We're gonna be getting a lot of excess mid-range energy from the reflections in your room. And so the horn is actually controlling that mid-range part of the bandwidth and it's creating a much more balanced sound. Um, you'll see there the horn, the not the horn, but the, the test baffle. It is basically a 160 degree coverage window, very wide until you get up to around six kilohertz where it quickly will narrow. And by one octave above six kilohertz at 12 kilohertz, it's narrowed down to around an 80 degree coverage window. So next thing is I wanted to look at the distortion sweeps and I was a bit surprised with this particular driver that it is quite limited and it's how loud it'll actually go. So 85 dB is what I found was the maximum output, 85 dB SPL at one meter where the distortion would crest uh, at 1% distortion. So 
if we go back and you look at my previous video of the SB acoustics, you'll notice that I had output up to 100 dB. So we had 15 dB more headroom with the SB acoustics dome tweeter in the 1155 horn. So now is this an actual limitation in practice? I listened to the to this horn and I found that um, I didn't notice any distortion at um, moderate to higher listening levels. I didn't go really loud with it, but I, I honestly don't think that if, if you're listening to these horns at say a two to three meter listening distance at regular listening levels, I don't think that, that you're gonna have a problem with that distortion limited SPL test where we found that 85 dB was the loudest that it wanted to go. So uh, subjective listening impressions on this, so I did a direct comparison with the 1155 horn that I featured in my previous video using the SB29 dome tweeter. And so what I found just subjectively was that the RAL ribbon does produce a more transparent treble, especially if you're referring, if looking at five kilohertz and above, it does seem to have more, more detail. However, both are excellent uh, configurations. So. Um, so this concludes my video. I can put up some more comparisons there. Uh, I, I am going to start introducing uh, cumulative spectral decay in my measurements. I have finally figured out how to get a good um, display using the Arda software. So that'll be an interesting comparison as well. I'll put the, the spectral decay uh, comparison there up in the video. You can see this is between the SB acoustics and the RAL. So it just gives you a side-by-side -side comparison there. So um, now another thing I wanted to mention too was the RAL is, was sent to me by my customer and I physically measured the RAL and, and made the horn custom for that. Now I do this for a living so if you have a uh, pure true ribbon or a planar or an AMT type tweeter and you are interested in doing something similar to to obtain the benefits that you can get by horn loading then please send me an email and I'll look at the published specifications for that tweeter and let you know if it's a viable candidate for horn loading so um, I just had a customer recently inquire about uh, left right and center horn trio for his home theater using a Mundorf AMT. And it certainly looks like that would be a candidate as well. So that concludes this video. Thanks guys for watching. Uh, please make sure you click the like button and subscribe. And I'll post some product links in the description as well as a link to my blog post. Uh, be sure to check out my blog on a regular basis because there's always new content. Take care and stay safe.